Peace. Hey, it's Chris. Back today with a smiling face to at least keep you company while you're in isolation. Just because you're alone doesn't mean you have to be alone. Am I right? Now look, today I decided I'm gonna do something a little bit different. Instead of talking about the latest iPad or what the next iPhone is gonna be, I wanna tell you guys about something really practical that makes a huge difference. It's a big part of my business and productivity and actually even personal life. Wait, am I building this up too much? Uh, it's just an app. It's nothing super crazy, but it's something that I think you're gonna find really useful. So look, I use a lot of really great apps that I just couldn't work without on all my devices, whether it's my iPhone, my iPad, or my Mac, or even my Apple Watch. So things like Notion, things like IA Writer, or Reader, R-E-E-D-E-R, -E -E or Pocket, or MindNode, the list just goes on. But one app in particular, I feel like really functions as the backbone to my productivity workflow. And not only that, but even the, for my business. I mean, it's that big of a deal. And that app is an app that's been around for a long time, which is called Drafts. <laughs> how long can I draw this out? Drafts, I've talked about a lot, but I've never gone in depth in terms of how I use it. And that's what I wanna do today because it's deceptively simple and it can do so much more than even I know how to do. And I think I kind of use it in a different way than a lot of people use it. So this should be pretty interesting. So today I wanna talk about what it is in case you don't know, and then how I use it. And not just that, but how I use it on all my different devices. So this is gonna be really holistic. And then at the end for the power users, we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the extra functionality and features that just take everything to the next level. But first of all, what is drafts? Well, it's really simple. They build themselves as the place where text starts. And that makes sense because wherever you open up drafts, it opens up to a blank page. You don't have to go through any subfolders or menus or hit any buttons to start a new note or anything. You open it up and you're ready to type. So by default, there's just an inbox. So if you create a draft, which is basically just a note made of text, and you can do that by typing or with your voice or by copying from the clipboard, then it just goes into your inbox. And if you want, you can further organize it using tags. So that's what Drafts is. Now, I'm actually a Drafts Pro subscriber, so I actually have gone to the point of paying $1.99 per month to get some extra features, which is a bargain for me because I use this so much. Basically though, Drafts Pro, it just gives you some advanced functionality and features and syncing through all your devices. We're gonna get to that stuff at the end of the video. I guess if I could describe Drafts in two words, I can't make it one word. Well, I guess I could. It would be frictionless. I was gonna say less friction, but frictionless, it's frictionless. Now here's the thing, I think everybody probably ends up using drafts a little bit differently. The default is just to put something in drafts when it occurs to you, when you discover it, and then process it later or from there. So if you're gonna write an email, you can start it in drafts because it's so fast, and then export it to your email program or a note program or whatever it is, text message. Some people just start everything text-based in drafts and then finish it somewhere else. That's not really how I use it. The way I like to use drafts is sort of like a personal database. So whenever I have a really great idea, it goes into drafts and I tag it. Or whenever I run across something that's really cool that I don't wanna forget, it goes into drafts and I tag it because it's so quick and convenient and frictionless. So let's say I have a really great idea for a way that I can improve my business or an idea for a new business. Put it in drafts, give it the appropriate label. Or let's say I run across a really cool app that I know I wanna put in a video later. Put it in drafts, give it a tag. Or maybe a really cool product or accessory, drafts, tag, frictionless. Basically though, it's supplementing or enhancing my memory. That's honestly what it is. Because I can't remember everything. But with drafts, I kinda can. Nothing escapes me. And I really consider it like one of my superpowers, to be honest. So on the one hand, this sounds like nothing, right? I'm just cataloging stuff that I'm gonna remember and do something with later. But on the other hand, it actually is the important mechanism that runs most of daily tech. That's not an exaggeration. For instance, whenever I'm doing a device review, let's say the new 2020 iPad Pro that I just reviewed. Well, I unbox it and I take it out and I turn it on, and I set it up, and as I start using it, I have these little observations. 
And what I do is I just save those observations in drafts and tag it 2020 iPad Pro review, for instance. And then as I'm using it just naturally and or organically, by the time it comes to actually create the review, I can go in, access that tag, and then start organizing those little observations into the outline of my actual review. And that's the thing, those things happen organically. I'm just kind of scooping them up so that I can organize them and use them later. Again, that raw material. And that's a very different approach than just sitting down and saying, here's this new iPad, what do I think about it? And trying to bang out a review real quick. I'm gonna miss a ton of stuff that way. Likewise, you guys know I post a lot of roundup type videos here on the channel, whether it's a list of the best apps for whatever Apple device or the best accessories for whatever Apple device. Those kind of roundup videos all start in drafts because I find something, I run into it organically, just out in the wild, doesn't matter what app, whether it's a news app or Twitter or a YouTube video, wherever, wherever I find something, I tag it and catalog it in drafts. And then later I have that raw material available to actually make content out of it in a snap. Now it's the exact same thing for Apple Hype. You guys probably know applehype.com is the new website that I launched where you can see what's new, what's important in the Apple ecosystem every day in just 15 seconds or less. And the way that I organize that is when I run into an app or when I run into an accessory or a news item, I tag it and put it into drafts. And then every day I look at it when it's time to refresh the website and publish it. And I say, what's the best, coolest thing that I need to feature in any of these categories today? and it ends up making a great experience for you guys. But it's all powered by drafts. So in a nutshell, ideas, observations, and just cool finds. All those things live in drafts. When I find them, I tag them, put them in drafts, and it becomes my own personal database of really cool stuff. Now that's kind of my main usage scenario, but on top of that, I do use drafts in kind of the traditional way, where if I need to just make a temporary draft or note or something, uh, that I don't need to hang on to for later. I can just do that in drafts or whatever, uh, but I don't typically use it to start a text message and then move over to text message app or email or whatever. I don't really use it that way. All right, so let's go through how I use drafts on all my different devices, starting with the iPhone. It's in my pocket, it's with me all the time. And really on the iPhone, I don't really open up the drafts app too much to use it. I do sometimes just to create something from scratch, mostly when I come across a news article or find something really cool on the web or in an app or in a video, I'll just use the share sheet, the share icon, and then find drafts and save and tag something there. So it's really my first point of contact for a lot of stuff that ends up getting saved into drafts. So I don't access drafts to read it or use it much on the iPhone, mostly just to catalog and tag stuff. Now on the iPad, which right now is the 2020 iPad Pro with the trackpad, which I love, which go watch all my iPad videos that I just made about it, cause it's great. It's pretty much the same thing as the iPhone. I catalog and tag a lot of stuff, but on the iPhone, I start creating a lot of content using drafts as a, as a springboard, as a starting place as well. So oftentimes what that actually means is that I'll open up in split screen, side by side view, drafts on one side, and then Notion, more often than not, on the other side. Now Notion, if you're unfamiliar, it's a great notes app. It's really more of a wiki kind of an app where you can just store, uh, it's another kind of a database kind of for all your knowledge and information. I wouldn't use it in place of a traditional notes app for just quick notes, but for really detailed notes, like I like to make, where you can really drill down. There's so many powerful features that all get integrated into one note file that is so cool. So that's why I like Notion but then I'll reference my drafts on one side of the screen and then I'll create something out of those drafts, out of those tags on the other side in Notion. And then on the iPad, it's really cool because it's like drag and drop and there's all these unique features that are part of the iPad workflow that just work really well. Something else though on the iPad that I really like, and you could technically do this on the iPhone too, but I like it better on the iPad is using the drafts widgets. The reason I like it on the iPad is because you can see your widgets right there on the home screen next to your apps. And the drafts widget is just one of the best because it lets you do four things. You can create a new draft from scratch, start typing really easy, really fast, or you can copy from the clipboard to create a new draft, which is great or you can jump right into voice dictation right off the home screen on the iPad, which is really cool too, and then you can search. Now on the Mac, there's a drafts app. I installed it, obviously, and that's cool. 
Uh, it's a little bit different, takes some getting used to compared to the iPad or the iPhone app, but all the same functionalities there. What I really like on the Mac side though is the Mac menu bar app or icon version of Drafts, which basically gives you the same functionality that you get in the iPad widget or the iOS widget. So you can create, you can create from clipboard, you can voice dictate uh, or you can search, but it's just a really simple way. I like to just hit the capture button uh, and just start capturing something right away. Now I've talked about using it on the iPhone, the iPad and the Mac, and most apps stop there, but Drafts is so full featured that it has a really great Apple Watch app as well. Now on the Apple Watch version, when you load that up, it defaults to voice dictation. That's the one main icon that you see, even though you could sit there and scribble out something uh, if you wanted to, but that kind of defeats the point, right, on the Apple Watch. So even if you're out on a jog and you leave your iPhone at home, for instance, if you have a great idea and you need to capture it, you can just fire this up and use Siri voice dictation. It's a snap and then it goes right into your inbox. And if you want to, you can even add to that draft using your voice. You can tack on to it, append stuff to it, or you can tag it right there on your watch. It's so cool. Just everything that I've described already, that kind of base level functionality, is really great, it's the heart of drafts, and it's very, very useful. But you can take things to the next level with some extra features. One thing I love about drafts is that since it's been around for so long, it integrates with so many other really great and really useful apps, Notion among them. And what's really cool is that on Drafts website, there's a whole list of actions that other users have already created for you that you can just add to your own Drafts app that will just enhance your functionality tenfold. Within Drafts too, there are operations which let you control several Drafts in bulk. One of my favorite operations is to select several different drafts, maybe for my 2020 iPad Pro review, for instance, and instead of keeping them single and separate, I can select them and then merge them together. And then the third more advanced thing that you can do is create a workspace for yourself. And basically what that workspace is gonna let you do is, let's say you just use drafts for everything. Well, you can have a lot of tags building up and it'd be kind of hard to sift and sort through all that stuff to find what you're after, although there is a search and that's great but you can make it a lot easier on yourself by creating a workspace. So for me, I could have a workspace for Apple Hype and a workspace for daily tech videos and a workspace for my sliced apple or whatever it is. You can separate those workspaces so that you only see the relevant tags for that project or workspace, which is great. So yeah, I mean, that's about it. I would recommend that you download it and dive in and try it out and see what you can do with it. And I feel like this could become one of your superpowers as well. Just never forgetting anything that maybe would have taken you too long to write down or to, to make a note about previously. The title of this video is very accurate. I couldn't live without this app. I couldn't run Daily Tech without it. I could, but it wouldn't be nearly as fun or good or as, as streamlined because this is so convenient. There's no other app out there that does as much while also doing as little as drafts, that's for sure. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging out. Uh, hope you have a good rest of the day. And don't forget, you can check out at Daily Tech, spelled daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. And don't forget to check out the podcast and applehype.com. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Later.